Hello, all my wonderful supporters and people who are curious about the effects of scuba diving on PTSD. Today is Saturday. I flew from my home in the United States to the Bahamas last Sunday. So this is my sixth day of my, well, the seventh day of my journey. And uh, we're gonna be going diving later today, but I'm very excited to share that last night I slept so good so hard, so deep. I'm gonna try not to cry, but it's been years, years since I've had that kind of sleep without needing some sort of drug or substance to get me there. I woke up early this morning and I was happy to be alive and excited and not just trying to go back to bed. And I didn't even feel tired anymore, which is always how I feel when I get up, no matter what amount of sleep I had. So with depression, you can get enough sleep, but feel never rested, right? There's this fatigue that hangs over you. So even though you got plenty of sleep, your body you know, is ready to go, but your mind is like, nah, I don't wanna do anything. And with PTSD, of course, that has a role to play in it. When you experience PTSD, you can likely also experience depression and anxiety. It kind of comes with the package because you're living in a state that your brain was not meant to be. And so your life is dramatically affected. And yeah, you're going to experience depression. And um, so, but I slept. And normally my nights go as follows. I'll take medication to get to sleep, including a uh, melatonin, which is a natural thing, but also a benzodiazepine, which is an anti-anxiety medication that doctors very rarely prescribe anyone because of its addictive nature. I have been unable at any point in my life to get off that drug, and yet I have wanted to get off that drug for such a long time because it has such terrible side effects. I can usually sleep to about 3 a.m. and then that's when the tossing and the turning start, right? I'm rolling in my sleep, I'm having bad dreams, I'm startled awake for no reason. I toss, turn, sometimes sleep just doesn't happen and I lay in this state of sadness that I can't go to sleep because I want to and um, you know, uh, not really wanting to get up and do anything either because I've got drugs in my system that are sedating me. So I made the choice to stay on my medication during this time period of scuba diving and work on phasing it out when it seemed like, okay, yeah, you're in a good spot to be able to do that. And um, consulted with some previous divers that's worked with Kevin to kind of reach that conclusion. Because I was concerned, are the drugs gonna play a role in this? Is it gonna hamper my ability to have a healing here? Um, but I've just stuck with it. And last night I slept so soundly and then I woke up and it was 8 a.m. And I'm like, hey, I'm not tired. I think I could get up. I think I'm ready to do stuff. I think I'm happy to be alive. I uh, don't feel like I need to spend the morning in bed just because I can. Um, <laughs> I can't even express to you what a huge thing that is for me. It's hard to get too excited about it because I hope it's not a fluke, you know? I'd like this to be an everyday thing. So the fact that it's just happened is almost like, wow, this is great. And oh, but don't get your hopes up because what if it doesn't happen again? And that's, you know, <laughs> not what you want to be thinking. You want to just be like, yay, we had the success, you know, and let's keep hoping for continued successes. And maybe there'll be some rebounds and some challenges, but we got to bank on every good thing that happens. And that's really what like neuroplasticity is, is talking about these days is in helping other people heal from trauma is yeah, there's a sh shit ton of negative things you could focus your attention on in life, but you've got to pull out the good positive things and really bask in the joy of those things and really feel it, you know, and embrace it and celebrate it. 
and then you know refocus your mind on that good stuff and so i am choosing to celebrate that last night i hit my head on that pillow and i did not wake up until eight o'clock this morning and i did not feel like laying in bed all day and i feel rested and i don't feel anything but alive you know um that is awesome and i'm so grateful um i'm not gonna cry because i want to just stay in this place of joy with it so thank you kevin's been working so hard with me <laughs> to figure out you know how do we get her to that spot you know and uh taking the challenge very seriously taking all the support that I rallied, all the work that I've done, um, the time I've needed to take away from my young children and said, you know what, I'm going to do all I can and um, I can't do it all, but um, I can sure do what we've seen. It has helped others. So I'm so excited to be able to stay here for another uh, week and see what additional dives will do for me. It's so exciting um, and worth celebrating, right? It's worth celebrating. A great night's sleep is worth celebrating in my world because it just doesn't happen. So uh, I feel so many things. God bless everything. God bless the earth mother. God bless you know your inner voice. God bless scuba diving. God bless people like Kevin who are authentic and genuine and real and and all of that, and it's so good. And I'm really happy for it, and it's a great success. Um, along the way, I've gotten so much support, but there's always been this resistance factor, right? And I think some people would call that the devil or Satan. Um, other traditions would just call it a chaos factor of the universe. Some traditions would see it as a necessary resistance, as a process towards healing i.e. a pearl does not become a pearl unless it is faced with irritation. <laughs> so however you choose to view it, I've had quite a few things happen that have been just like, really? Right now? That's happening? Like, this person's in the hospital and now uh, this thing's falling apart and now this person's messaging me um, out of control with their own trauma and kind of projecting it on me and uh <laughs> it's gotten to the point where I do just have to laugh at it because it's like uh wow <laughs> what better sign could I have that something actually maybe wants to push against my pre-healing process here and so I could view that as the enemy or I could be like you know what I'm not impressed so I'm not going to be oppressed and you're not going to steal my joy so go ahead and keep on trying but it ain't going to work I'm going to shout the truth to the mountaintops of what my experience has been. I'm not going to hold back. Right now I'm Diver D, but one day I'm going to tell my legal name and every single person who comes in my path is going to hear my story. And I will write it. I will participate in whatever continued research happens. I will support this cause until the day that I die because it's the only thing that can make purpose out of the suffering that I have had to go through. And so anyone with PTSD, scuba diving has a potential to help you and I can't guarantee that it will. And I know I still have to do a lot of other things to continue to support my wellness. I can't live in an area that's full of trauma. I can't surround myself with people who aren't working through their stuff. I need to make sure that I create a safety bubble and continue to heal from codependency and all of these things that surface as you're working through trauma. And anybody in my life who's not giving me what I'm willing to give them it's just, bye, you're a good acquaintance, but you can stay on the outskirts and I'm going to continue my healing journey. And uh, I've been around a lot of different spiritual people. And it seems like a lot of them aren't comfortable with the fact that I am able to have an experience in ways that are not traditional to one exclusive faith. I find meaning in each faith, although I tend to lean towards one specific God, I do find now uh, a new um, spiritual experience that's happening. And I don't feel like any of that is something that I have to feel ashamed or bad about um, because it tramples on what somebody else's dogma is. 
if I want to be a Jesus lover who practices yoga, I don't think that means I'm worshiping the, the devil. It means I really like stretching. And if I find Mother Earth down in Dean's blue hole and she's talking to me and telling me how much she loves me and that moves me to a point where I finally have a place in my heart that feels real self-worth, then there's nothing for me to defend there. And I um, am just not going to get caught up in anybody's debates or reasoning about what's happening here. Watch someone's process, support it, love it, embrace it, be positive, but don't distract from their process with your own agenda. And that's the biggest thing that I will say to people who want to get on board with seeing PTSD people healed, but they've got their own narrow views of what that needs to look like. And that is not going to work for anybody because each person is very individual and in what they're going to need to get where they're need, they need to go. And wherever they need to go, you can pray, you can send energy for their process, but you don't get to determine what that looks like, nor should you try. So that's all I want to say on that. Hopefully I won't speak on this issue again because I really don't want to be focusing my mind on it. But this is part of the journey too, right? It's redefining who you are, what you're going to tolerate in your inner circle, who gets to be there in your inner circle, and making good decisions about, you know, um, how to support your healing journey. And, and that is a part of my process in all of this, right? You know, so I just had to get it out. It's 11 minutes long now. I told Kevin I would start making these five minute videos because he knows I like to rattle on and on and on. And someday I'll get more efficient and better with these, this selfie stuff. But I wanna say a special shout out to Diver C, who has been incredibly inspirational and offering a lot of wisdom and hope and encouragement through this whole process and really seems to, I don't know, he just, I, listening to him and conversing with him, it's like, okay, he gets it. We're on the same, we kind of have, have gone through the same thing here. And uh, it might look a little bit different, but for the most part, you know, it's the same kind of thing producing the same result when you're under that water so many thanks to Kevin and Audrey and to all my supporters and to everybody who's just supporting me getting well however that needs to look and thank you for a good night's sleep uh so glad and I hope everybody has a wonderful weekend I know I am um enjoy your life uh, you, we were here to, to have some joy in this life and not be trapped in a cage of misery. Um, no matter what happens, we were here to enjoy life. All right, bye-bye.